Hello and welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you for joining me today, April 27th, 2020, as we take a look at the upcoming journey of Venus. Venus is in Gemini, preparing to station retrograde, and we're going to talk about the transiting energies and aspects she'll be making over the next number of months. She is going to be in Gemini until August, the beginning of August, and she's going to be interacting very strongly with Neptune and Pisces. So it's going to be quite an interesting few months as Venus, the divine feminine energy, how we show up in relationships, what we need, how we want to receive. Venus, who is connected with relating with values, with money, what you want, what you own. Venus, who is about how we feel loved and acknowledged. She is in Gemini and going retrograde for six weeks, beginning on May 12th until June 25th. So this is going to be a time of reassessing our values, especially on a daily basis. Venus in Gemini is very much about ideas, what we say, what we think, what we communicate. Uh, it is a social energy. It wants to interact with people. It wants to go out into the community, walk around, go to the park, go to the movie theater. And all these things are closed, but slowly reopening. So there's this energy that we're feeling of, I'm ready to move. I'm ready for something to happen. The restlessness of Gemini is going to be increasing in May and June. And this is going to be very interesting as we are being guided to step back into our lives, to step back into our daily patterns and habits with a new awareness around what really matters and what we value. So the Venus retrograde is interesting during a time of social distancing and during a time when we can't have uh, the typical interactions that we want or that we need. So we need to be thinking differently. And this is a strength of Gemini, the new solutions, new ideas. What can we solve or see in a new way that perhaps was not evident before? The Venus in Gemini is asking us to reassess what matters to us, what we need to do, and to go slow. So Venus stationing retrograde is where we pull the energy back in to ourselves. The exact retrograde on May 12th or May 13th, depending on your location, occurs at 21 degrees of Gemini, 50 minutes. And this is where Venus is still making a square to Neptune and Pisces at 20 degrees. Now, this is very important because that Neptune and Pisces energy is very influential. And it's about dissolving, releasing, surrendering. It's not knowing. Neptune and Pisces is the virus is bacteria, is germs, is how we are aware of what we can't see. And we're tapping into more intuitive messages and energies with Neptune and Pisces. We're growing spiritually. We're looking for the bigger picture. Uh, Neptune and Pisces is always about reflections and endings, uh, what you need to forgive or what you can choose to forgive, I should say, uh, what you're ready to allow to be complete so that it can transmute into another form. So we have this big surrender energy of Neptune and Pisces, and here comes Venus in Gemini, who wants movement, who wants information, who's very curious, and there's a big removal, a big hazy removal where it could seem that you don't know what is happening or you're not sure what is really going on. Uh, this is the energy of potentially deception, lies, or betrayal. And that's because of how Neptune and Pisces makes things very unclear, very foggy and fuzzy. And then the square to Venus is that a hidden aspect, a hidden energy of not having clarity, uh, frustration, and even a sense of what do I want? So when you think about how Venus is about what we need and what we want, that square to Neptune removes that firm footing. So this is going to be a very interesting dance. Now, let me give you some dates of how this unfolds. On May 4th, 
through the 6th, Venus and Gemini will make an exact square to Neptune and Pisces at 20 degrees. That's the first, the opening square is what we call it, the opening square. Then they will meet up again a second time, May 20th to 22nd, when Venus is then retrograde, and they meet up again at 20 degrees. Then they make a third and final connection the end of July, July 27th and 28th, also at 20 degrees. And this time, Venus is direct, and Neptune is retrograde. So what we're really being given an opportunity here is to recalibrate, reprioritize, and reassess what we haven't seen that we need. And it's not an answer that you'll find in your mind, and that would be the Gemini energy. This is the feeling of something that you know you need and perhaps have not received from yourself. Even though we know that Venus is about how we relate to others, she also is about how we relate to ourself, the relationship we have established with our own needs, our own self-love, self-value, self-worth. It's where we say, I am worthy of this. I need this. And you require it from yourself first. So we're each individually shifting our internal relationships with ourselves, although we could have the perception or the projection that it's outside of ourselves, that it's someone else. And on that note, you could very well meet or be triggered by someone who reveals to you more of what's been hidden within yourself, within your own relationship with yourself that you didn't see before. I've mentioned before, Four on this podcast, the book, uh, The Five Love Languages. And it's a great way to understand how you receive love. And so if you were to dive into the five love languages and look at what feels correct for you in terms of what makes you feel good, where you feel recognized and validated, you first want to ensure that you're doing that for yourself, that you're giving yourself that type of love in that language because you are responsible for putting on your own mask and filling up your own cup. You are responsible for knowing yourself. And then when we know ourselves, that's then how we present ourselves in relationships and how we establish and form relationships with other people. But it starts with you. So this is an internal process, an internal reworking of perhaps what hasn't been healthy for you, where you've been disappointed, where you've been in a place of despair or frustration, a sense of, I want more, but I don't know what, or this isn't working, what do I need to do? There's the potential here throughout May, June, and July to understand what parts of yourself have been untapped, what parts of your needs you have overridden and have not acknowledged. Now, Venus and Gemini is the mind, what you communicate, what you say, how you think about something. And that's being challenged by the Neptune and Pisces feeling energy, the intuitive energy. So we actually have to get out of our minds. We actually have to go into something more in the heart, uh, more in the feminine energy of being receptive, and look at what have I not received, or rather, what am I willing to receive now that I want to fully acknowledge in myself. And so we have a reestablishment of relationship values and energetically a reestablishment of where you're going to be in energetic alignment with other people. Because once you rework that in yourself, then you're going to connect with others. Conversely, people will fall away. So during the Venus retrogrades, we have relationship issues. This can be friendships, partnerships, um, anything with family, any types of relationships in your world, they come up for review. And chances are, because we're moving through a very big time on the planet, it could be quite clear to you where the energies are not a match. You feel it, you sense it, you know it. And then you go perhaps into your head to justify it or to overlook it or to intellectualize it. This Venus retrograde is asking us to surrender in a very big way, to be okay not knowing where the relationship is going to go, where the friendship might go, where the 
uh, situation might unfold. There is something here in the collective that says we're each being given some choice points about how we're going to show up. And that is based on how you are loving and honoring yourself first. And then who is going to be there to connect with you. And this goes the other way too, where you're going to feel it in other people, uh, that they're going through their own inner workings and changes, uh, conscious or not. And you're going to see if you're going to meet them in their energetic space, because everything is energy first. Everything is, is built and based on energy, vibration, and frequency. And as we ascend and move through an awakening process, our energy shift. We tend to shift out of fear and victimness. We, we shift out of feeling powerless. We shift out of blame or self-pity or some of these lower vibrational energies. However, many of these are associated with Pisces. So we're looking at what unconscious energies in relationships have given you the perception that you aren't lovable or that you aren't loved, that you aren't worthy, or that you aren't valued, and you're going to have some opportunities to powerfully claim your truth, to powerfully claim what you know is true about you because of the fact that you exist. Merely existing, merely being here demonstrates that you are a vessel of love, that you are loved just for showing up to this wild and crazy party. And yet we come in with deeper programming. We come in with the programming from past lives. Uh, we come in with programming of unhealed wounds. We have deeper belief systems that have created our relationship dynamics. We have family programming, cultural programming, uh, things that you have been in these autopilot loops in. Uh, there could even be the strength of your ego or the mind that has prevented you from seeing something or growing in a certain way. There are many things that influence how we show up in relationships and how we are in relationship with ourselves. So this is going to be a time of remaining in your higher consciousness. And in Gemini, we can ask questions. And it might be easier, in fact, to ask questions and listen for the answers. And that listening would be a productive use of Neptune and Pisces. Now, I do want to say that when Venus squares a planet, it's typically a soft square, meaning there's something that she wants that she can't have. There's something that is a discomfort. Um, it's not a jolting square, uh, such as when Mars squares a planet. It's not a difficult square, such as when Saturn squares a planet. But with the Venus square, we're understanding what we don't have, especially to Neptune and Pisces. So there's a sense of letting go, removal, and then being in an empty space, being in a place of the void. But please remember that the void or that energetic space after you surrender is really quite powerful. Because that is where all energies can come together for a new experience of creation. And if you can allow yourself that perspective, that whatever leaves, whatever is removed or dissolved, whatever you have to surrender, it's out of your control. It, it wasn't your choice. It wasn't something you wanted. It happens. And then you're given this awesome opportunity to exhale, breathe, meditate, focus on what you want to create next, really get strong in your intentions, really become aware of your new possibilities and potentials, and to be floating in that void or that surrender. And this is the stuff of spiritual mastery. It's not easy. But there's something about this Venus retrograde that is asking us to get out of our mind and to stay in that place of wonder, of miracles, of developments that you can't plan and you can't expect. So detachment would be a good word. 
detachment from one particular outcome. Now, when you open up to multiple outcomes, any number of outcomes, what you're tapping into is the power of the universe and the power of creative forces that can make anything happen in unbelievable ways. Things that we could never plan with our human mind. Things that are really for the best and highest good for all. So if you can stay in that place of allowing something to unfold without an attachment to a particular outcome, you're going to move through this with greater grace. You're going to move through this with a sense of, I'm floating, this won't last forever, everything comes to an end, this too shall pass. And it can be something quite big for you if you have any planets or points at 20 degrees of the mutable signs. The mutable signs being Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. And that's because Venus and Neptune are connecting three times at 20 degrees. I would give it an orb of six degrees. So I would say 22 degrees back to 16 degrees, but anything that's closest to that 20 degree mark is going to be the most impactful and influential. So Venus is reworking our connection to ourselves, which will show up through relationships. Venus also rules money and our value systems. We're shifting what matters to us. We're shifting where we place meaning and that can be confusing. Uh, There is the energy of confusion with this Venus retrograde. And the more you can hold off on doing anything significant or making a big decision, the better. Because it's going to give you breathing room and breathing space. And allow yourself to tame the mind, to tame the anxiety. Um, I recommend doing anything like a guided meditation. Uh, I always recommend tapping I recommend acupuncture, uh, Reiki, any kind of energy work that's going to help you process outside of the mind to just move it through you. Now, the other dynamics that are happening here is that during this Venus retrograde, she's going to make a conjunction to the sun on June 4th, and that's going to happen at 13 degrees. Venus will be retrograde. The sun is always direct. And the sun brings light and warmth. The sun is the big highlight and is going to help nourish this Venus retrograde in Gemini, brings in something supportive, um, something that perhaps allows Venus to believe in herself again and to feel loved. So again, this is June 4th, and that's important uh, because that's also around the upcoming lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. So that will be a dynamic time. I feel that the sun conjunct Venus is the sun's neutrinos. The energy codes from the sun are now streaming into Venus retrograde and reprogramming her, reprogramming the feminine energy that reminds her she is loved, reminds her that she is going to be okay. And I feel that there's this download of bigger faith, uh, especially because that is during the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, which is opposing the sun and Venus conjunction. So we're looking at how we are processing information that isn't working to support us. It's almost like you become your own worst enemy or you go down those mental rabbit holes, or you aren't even aware of what you're thinking. There's something here that's going to be shifting June 4th and June 5th, and Venus is certainly feeling that blast of energy during that eclipse period, but also with the sun conjunction. Then Venus continues her retrograde, and June 10th and 11th, she makes a sextile to Chiron, at nine degrees. This is also another important transit during the Venus retrograde period. So Venus makes a sextile to Chiron three times. The first time 
was April 11th at 6 degrees. Venus in Gemini sextiling Chiron in Aries at 6 degrees. The second time they meet up is at 9 degrees. Again, that's June 10th and 11th. And then their third and final connection is July 10th and 11th, where they meet up again at 9 degrees. So when Venus makes a sextile to Chiron in Aries, she is healing her ability to be herself and to stand strong in her sense of self, the independence, the sense of I am here to exude my energy and to love who I am. There's a healing influence with this supportive sextile to Chiron and it's showing her more of who she is now and giving her strength to stand in her power. And this is a healing power that I'm feeling coming through at a soul level. It's almost like a wound that's been carried for lifetimes. And there's an opportunity here, May, June, and July, to heal something across multiple lifetimes. It's really that big and it's really that significant. And so if you think about it, that's not a long period of time, although it can feel that way. But there is a three-month process that's reprogramming something for you at a deeper level in your heart. And I'm seeing the heart in like the hidden corners of the heart, like the back of the heart, you know, like the back of the closet where all the boxes are stacked and things are pushed back there and you have no idea what's even in those boxes. This is an unpacking. This is an unpacking And if you are staying tuned in to the themes that come up, you're going to see how your sense of self-love and what you value in yourself has influenced so many parts of your life that you weren't even aware of. And now you're ready to transition to a new, it's acceptance, a new place of acceptance of yourself. And that's part of Venus and Gemini sextiling Chiron in Aries. I feel it as an acceptance of self that you start to see and understand who you are in a higher way that brings in new downloads around how to love yourself from a place of strength and independence. Um, This could be interesting. This could be especially powerful for any relationship patterns with narcissists, for any relationship patterns with unhealthy egos or unhealthy masculine energies. Um, This could be where the feminine energy has been subverted and told to behave or that you needed to say a certain thing or be a certain way. Like It's like a restraint of energy is ready to be reworked. However, what's very important at a soul level is to not go into the blame against another person, but instead to come back to yourself and say, well, why did I choose this theme to heal? Why did I choose to heal something with a narcissist? Why did I choose to heal something with a family member or a masculine energy? And I'm saying the masculine energy because of the Chiron in Aries. Um, This can also be... Uh, anything around the Aries energy of um, anger or a unhealed self-acceptance of who you really are. And there's something being reworked that support knowing that you're worthy of what you need, but it's your responsibility. So there's a lot here about the ownership part of things. The the sense of, okay, I was a participant or I showed up or I did this or I did that or, you know, let's look at this in a balanced, objective manner. That, that's what I'm really feeling. And that's very um, intellectualizing the energy, which Venus and Gemini does. So we're intellectualizing some things about our relationship patterns, our relationship habits, but then we're also being asked to do our own healing work without knowing an exact outcome. So there's this very interesting dance, right, that Venus is doing with Chiron and with Neptune. It's deeply healing at a soul level, and I feel like that is one of the most important messages at this time, is to understand how big this is and that you're doing deeper work that 
you might not even know the full story. And <laughs> Venus in Gemini is a storyteller, a teacher, a writer, a communicator. She wants the information. Um, she enjoys the stimuli. You know, tell me the story and I'll tell you a story. But there's something here about rewriting these stories at a soul level and going into some of these unpacked areas of the heart that have been holding and carrying some musty boxes, um, some things that you thought were collectibles or that were necessary. And, you know, you go in and you open up the box and you're like, why in the world do I even have all this stuff anymore? I can't believe I've had this sitting in here for 10 years because you look at it and it's just meaningless to you. It doesn't have any value anymore. So you're taking it out. You're disposing of it. So that's what we're doing energetically during this very interesting Venus retrograde phase. We're unpacking and removing what is musty and old, what we've carried for lifetimes. Uh, we're taking ownership of our soul's choice to have an experience, to heal a lesson, to understand something. And then we are saying, okay, I don't even know where this is going, but I'm going to trust it. I'm going to trust the journey. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to trust that this is going somewhere even better. And I'm going to trust it because I know I am divinely loved just for being here. So these are the messages you want to give yourself at this time. These are the things you want to remind yourself because the surrender, the confusion, the letting go, the uncertainty... That can do a number on us, right? Like that can really ramp up the anxiety. That can really get the monkey mind going and all the fears pop up. So there is work to be done during this time. But I hope this gives you some good insight into the deeper purpose is that we are digging into some soul stories that we didn't know we were carrying. And now we have the opportunity to unpack them, to heal them, to resolve them in a way that supports who you are now. And as you do so, it's going to become clearer to you where you have an energetic connection with other people and where you do not. Um, Again, this can be friendships. This can be love relationships. uh, This can be family members and siblings. Venus in Gemini is siblings and peers. So we are each doing this. And when you're conscious of it, it can help you detach and not take it personally. Know that it's just energy, it's just soul choices, um, it's just each person going on their path at their place in their life, at their level of consciousness, uh, with their own free will. But know that your power is within you, and that is quite an awesome thing to connect with. So it's quite an interesting Venus retrograde period. And I do talk more about it in the monthly webinars that I offer you. So for example, I just released the May 2020 Soul Growth Astrology Webinar. And if you use the coupon code TAURUS, you can get it for 11 bucks. Um, I will touch on the Venus energy again in June and again in July. So we have an ongoing theme here over the next number of months. And it's interesting because of the eclipses that are happening as well. So the eclipses are always a big deal. They're big energy periods. They move us forward. We have three eclipses coming up. And our world is changing. We can't deny it, right? We see it and and we've experienced it for months now. But this can also be really exciting. This can be leveling up. This can be leapfrogging. This could be finally moving in the direction of a desire, a passion, a soul calling. So know that all of that is part of this energy too. And I don't know about you, but that always motivates me, you know, to be like, okay, something good is happening now. And one phrase that I like to say that I have to remind myself is that either way, it will be all right. Either way, it will be all right. And that's important because Gemini is a sign of duality of two things or two options or doing something twice. Pisces is also the energy of duality, but it's the duality between the human experience and the spiritual experience, the physical body and the intangibles in our world. So that concept of either way, it will be all right, 
good things are going to come from this situation no matter what. That can instantly rise your energy. Good things are going to transpire because because what you're doing is you're sourcing your intention from being loved, seen, recognized, and valued by the universe. And because you are loved, because you are honored, cherished, because you are valued for being here, when you operate from that place, you then start to see that energy all around you and things show up and they support you and good things happen and you get unexpected good news and developments occur and things click. So this is, it's, it's like walking on water lilies, uh, which I don't advise doing, but that whole concept of, okay, I have to step gently and I don't, I can't stay here for long. I have to keep moving onto the next lily pad and it's floating and uncertain and yet isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that I can do that? So travel lightly, travel with your heart, travel with a sense of trust in yourself, travel with the understanding that whatever unfolds or transpired, you are divinely loved. Amazing things can meet you at any turn. I'm getting the image of being in a city and you're walking down the city and you're like, should I go left or right here on 11th street? And you go left and you walk down a little bit further and you're like, should I go left or right here on Park Avenue? I'll go right. It's sort of like, no matter where you walk in the city, good things can meet you. Amazing developments can happen. So if that supports you, maybe that's the vibration you tune into. And just remember that It's quite a big energy period. It's just a big year. And, you know, I say that almost every show. But I guess I want to recognize that, that these are not normal times. This is not life as usual. And that's very evident. But that means we're going to use new tools. And we have new areas of mastery to practice. And if you can see it from a place of spiritual growth and development, it's going to certainly help you move through Uh, the day-to-day choices, and the day-to-day reality. Please know that you can come back and listen to this episode again if you want to revisit some of these Venus retrograde themes. I hope that this has supported you in understanding what matters now and what is essential in your life, as well as reminding you that everyone's going through this. Everyone's experiencing something shifting and changing around their Venus value systems. And The more that you put your power and choices into what resonates with you, the more you're going to continue to manifest what is exactly true for you. So thank you for joining me, friends. You can find out more about my latest astrology courses and programs at mollymccord.online. You can also discover more about my 12 books at consciouscoolchic.com. And there are audiobooks, by the way. Um, you can find the audiobooks on Audible, on Amazon, on Apple. Um, and I also hope that I can offer you support for your own soul mission. And you can find resources for business development at mollymccord.online. There's a free library of videos where I give you practical advice and information about building up your online platform, your online business, things you need to know. And honestly, some things I learned the hard way. I hope you don't learn it the hard way. Um, But I just want you to know that's another resource available. So thank you for joining me. I'll be back here soon with another episode. I do episodes every Monday and Wednesday. Thank you for your loyal listening. And I wish you the best as we move through this wild ride together. I'll see you soon.